Welcome to the Weekly Workplace Podcast, your hub for leveling up your workplace skills with a journey to success that's anything but boring. Get ready to ditch the dull and dive into the dynamic. Imagine high fives and fist bumps for triumphing over frontline challenges and confetti cannons for nailing your leadership goals. Our episodes feature interviews with industry game changers, spicy tips from trailblazing pros, and mind-blowing techniques to turn you into the office superhero you were meant to be. So, whether you're rocking the cubicle life or leading from the corner office, grab your cape and get ready to soar to new heights with the Weekly Workplace. Welcome to the Weekly Workplace, where professionals come to find insights and inspiration for success with you today, Missouri Yay! Training Institute. I- Oh, I just put my hand right in front of your face. Right <laughs> we, are, we are adding the video elements. So if you're following along with us on Podbean, uh, check out our YouTube playlist and you will find uh, the video. So if you're ever curious about what we our, look like. like yeah. I know, right? yeah. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. We're excited to launch this new series. And this is going to be a long one. Do y'all realize that last series I said last week was like six or seven episodes? It was nine. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, there was a lot to talk about with that. Yeah. You know, that idea of, of leadership development that was uh it's, it's a lot to talk about yes yeah the future ready work all that stuff mm-hmm. so much we'd love to hear your thoughts on that too if you're mm-hmm. you've gone back and listened to some of those episodes if you'd missed them along the way um let us know what you thought and then let us know what else you'd love to hear yeah. about so we are heading into um this idea of unleashing your genius anyone ever like chuckled the first time you heard that and you talked about unleashing your genius in the workplace well when when you first did this uh, didn't you make a joke about that i did to the whole group i mean you were doing it for like uh, 800 people um, and you had so many different locations that you were streaming this this on. But what was the joke? I can't read. I don't even remember. Somebody somebody said yeah. something about, oh, I, I, it's good to kind of learn about what I'm uh, my genius is or yeah. something like, like that. Like I'm actually a genius. I'm in actually something. a genius. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can say I'm a working genius. So <laughs> a certified working genius. A certified That's working what it was. Genius. I'm a certified yeah. working genius. There you go. Uh, yeah. So this uh, six types of working genius is, if you're unfamiliar with it, uh, this is actually one of the newer assessments that's out on the market today. And we're going to talk a little bit about what it is. Uh, I got certified on this back in December mm-hmm. uh, of 23. So uh, relatively new for MT. MTI to be offering um, new on the market. Uh, But Dewey, you were the one that brought this to me in the first place. So talk a little bit about why we started looking at this assessment. Well, every year at MU Extension, we kind of get the whole big 800 people together Mm -hmm. um, to do some professional development. And this was kind of chosen to do that. Uh, we wanted to um, bring this to everybody in our own organization. And uh, so that's when I, I heard about it. And um, uh, I'm a big Lincioni fan. Mm-hmm. And so because uh, if you're familiar with the five dysfunctions of a team, that's his work. And this is his newest work that he's put yeah. out is this the six working geniuses. And so um, I thought it was just a great fit. And uh, I'm so glad we got you all certified in it because <laughs> you've been because uh, there's been people who've been requesting this already. Yeah. So yeah. it's great. Yeah. What was your first thoughts when you heard about the six types of working genius, Ray? Um, it, you know, anything that that gives people an opportunity to think about how they get work done, mm-hmm. and especially in a space that they're comfortable in. And, you know, I'm all about like fulfillment and, mm-hmm. and joy and passion. Yeah. And, you know, I don't like to do what I don't like to do. And I think a lot of people are like that. Yeah. So I, I love this because it validated that. And I also love that it's a really, really, really good team yes. productivity tool. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm so Just glad you built that up. That. It is. It absolutely is. Um, and, th- and that's actually one of the things that really sets it apart from some of the other assessments that are out there on the market today. Like you have your standard personality assessments, uh, you're thinking the DISC or um, even Clifton Strengths or some of those other assessments. Hogan. Hogan, yes, that Ray just got certified in. That's right. Um, So there's the personality assessments that people are most familiar with. Um, But then there's this assessment. And they like to say that this assessment is actually only 20% personality and 80% productivity. Mm -hmm. And for me, I was like, how does that work? Um, And so as I started going through this process, I think I picked up a lot of momentum and excitement uh, about this offering because it's very practical. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's very simple. Mm-hmm. And it's meant for the team application yeah. versus just the individual application, right. which I think personality assessments are too. Sometimes it's just a little bit harder to to get there, though. Right. Um, this is 
Some, built in. It is. Yeah, it is. I, I certainly get that. Can you talk about the 20% is your personality and, and we're all good at different things, right? right? And so this model is going to kind of break that down for us, right? Yes. Um, but how you use that, that becomes the productivity, right? Yes. How do you tap into those strengths with your team members uh, in a team environment to get work done? Yes, absolutely. And so, you know, I love that, you know, Ray, you brought up that fulfillment and that joy and that energy. And, um, you know, that is that was the basis. So if you go back and, and they give a little bit of the history on the development of the assessment and the certification, but um, Patrick Lynchoni started this space of discovery uh, about 2020. And I think y'all remember what happened in 2020, right? Mm -hmm. And so what he started realizing through that is that, you know, we're all in this this kind of remote hybrid environment at that point, um, all kind of isolated. Like, so our, our way in which we work together as a team people were a little confused on how to do that and who's doing what and um, how do I ensure that people are still happy and fulfilled and joyful in the work that they're doing when they're not with their teams. And and so they'd put a lot of research into this assessment and it actually came out onto the market in early 2021. Uh, title is The Six Types of Working Genius. We're on version two now. Uh, so they've already gone through a couple of renditions of it. But the whole premise of this um, and again, as Dewey, you'd mentioned Patrick Lynchoni, very famous for the five dysfunctions of a team. And um, he's a well-known author and presenter, and he talks a lot on trust as mm -hmm. well. That's another good uh, area he talks in. And, and so this got this momentum because he's taken a lot of the concepts that he talked about in those spaces into how we bring it into the team environment and really uh, leveraging, appreciating, honoring, respecting how people naturally show up and what's bringing them joy and fulfillment in the work that mm -hmm. they're doing. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a right to be happy at work. Yes. Right? Well, everybody has a right to be happy. That's true. <laughs> That's true. And so we talk a lot about that sense of like joy. If you were to sit right now and you were, were to think about, you know, what is truly brings me joy in what I do every single day, would you be able to articulate it? And for a lot of people, we are probably really good at a lot of things, especially nowadays, because it the workplaces kind of demand us to, to do mm -hmm. a lot of things with less resources, right? That whole great resignation thing that happened. And so for us, Getting comfortable, they call he would call those the competencies, the things that you're able to do, doesn't mean that it's things that you're really passionate about, that really brings you that joy and fulfillment. And so working too much in those spaces actually ends up leading to that big B word of burnout. Mm -hmm. um, and you hear a lot of that. We've talked a lot about it on this show and through Gallup and all of that as well. So this assessment, in a nutshell, is meant to increase team productivity and to really help you define and identify what naturally do you bring to the table that is fulfilling to you, that is joyous to you, that makes you just excited and ready to show up to work every single day? Mm -hmm. And how do we do more of that by understanding it a little mm -hmm. bit better? Mm -hmm. Yep. What was your all's first thoughts? You both have taken the assessment now. What was your thoughts when you took uh, the assessment? When I first took it, I was kind of amazed at all the other assessments that we've taken <laughs> mm -hmm. and how this one, too, aligns with yes. the results of all the others, yeah. right? I don't think that it didn't surprise me, the results that came back. Um, I thought it was just right in line with other things that I've taken. So I, I, I appreciated it. Yeah. The one thing I really enjoyed about it was figuring out what you two were. <laughs> uh -huh. um, because I think, you know, I think we really, with just the three of us, we have a pretty well-rounded team, I think, when it comes to yeah. comparing it to what these geniuses are all about. Yeah. 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 I'm, mine is the exact same, right? That first, I always look for what is it telling me that I already know? Because you you rely on that for understanding or at least realizing that this is valid, mm -hmm. right? Sure. You know, if it's way off the end. Um, so it was definitely in alignment. Um, looking at it from the team perspective, that made sense too, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The things that um, bring us the joy in the multi different areas um, are also points that could be frustrating to others. Yeah. To oh, others. Yeah, yeah. So yes. that was really interesting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm glad you have tenacity. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that ain't me. Uh -uh. <laughs> well, and, you know, even the language that Lynchoni uses um, really resonated with me because he talks about this a lot, about this through the lens of uh, your gifts, right? Your natural kind of innate gifts. And when we look at something through the lens of it being a gift that really is unique to us, I think that changes the dynamic in how we 
reduce the amount of of guilt that we feel for maybe not having natural talents or strengths in something else. Mm. Uh, because you can say like, this is, this is my gift and this is what I'm bringing to the table. And then you're also able to actually look at someone else's gifts, as he calls them gifts, and maybe not judge it as much. So even sometimes the, the language nuances mm -hmm. in this um, really kind of drives it at home in certain directions. And that's a big point of conversation in the, the six types of working genius is utilizing this very simple, very fast tool to start reducing a sense of guilt in what you're not able to do and what's not natural to you and reduce the amount of judgment that you're placing on other team members for the way in which is natural and gifting to them. Mm -hmm. And so you talked about the working frustrations, mm -hmm. um, and that kind of leads directly into that. So, so Brown, for our listeners, can you kind of describe the basic framework of this? Yes. Of this model? Yes, absolutely. So as you, you might imagine, there are six types of working genius. <laughs> <laughs> How many? <laughs> there are six types of working genius. Uh, and so really what it comes down to is understanding that we all operate out of two working geniuses. We have two working competencies. Um, so to back up, the working geniuses are going to be the things that, again, are most natural to you or are your true gifts or giving you the most fulfillment in what you're doing day in and day out. Then you have your working competencies. Your working competencies also make up two geniuses. And those competencies are going to be the things that um, you're probably really good at. And people probably recognize that you're really good in those spaces too. But it's not exactly that point of fulfillment or energy for you. Mm -hmm. um, it's more about just being able to do it. And so that's the point where, where Lynchoni talks a lot about recognizing that space because we spend too much time there, it leads to burnout. And then you have the third category um, that is called your working frustrations. And those working frustrations are going to be the things that are least understood to you. That, for example, if it was somebody else's working genius, so to the point of tension you mentioned earlier, right, that's where those points of tension occur because you don't get it. You don't understand it. It's frustrating. Um, he talks in, in terms of elevations sometimes. And so uh, we'll, we'll talk more about that as we go throughout this series. But understanding that, that people dependent on where they are in their geniuses. We're constantly pulling conversations on our team to different levels, thinking about things in different ways. Mm -hmm. And so for somebody, you know, if that's your working frustration and it's somebody else's working genius on their team, then there is going to be those points of conflict and of tension. And how do we work through those and how do we identify those points of of, of concern, I guess you would say, before we get to those spaces, just by understanding people a little bit more and what the geniuses mean. Yeah. You know, I in my energy leadership coaching, you know, we we don't think there are mistakes. We don't think and see things as problems. Um, so my mind is shifting to this idea of those are the opportunities. Yeah. You know, and when you talked about honoring somebody else's gift, sometimes that's by, you know, acquiescing like, wow, that that's an area I mm -hmm. don't know a lot about. So why don't I lean into Brianna's, you know, genius in that area mm -hmm. um, and recognize the opportunity? Because um, I think leadership in a fully functional, high performing team is shared. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Your name might go on the check, Dewey. But <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what I think is, is interesting about this is if when I've noticed when teams concentrate on their strengths, the weaknesses don't matter. Right. Right. So, you know, if, if everybody can kind of tap into what brings in that fulfillment, what their genius is, uh, then you really tap into that and you don't have to worry about the, the weaknesses anymore because yeah. you probably have other people on the team that fulfill those needs. Mm -hmm. right? and, and maybe we're going to get to this in, in next next sessions. But, you know, the idea, of course, coming in and, and working and training and development and coaching with teams is not everybody who has that as their working genius is actually being asked or that's part of their job role, mm. you know? So they're, they're not well matched, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, you know, yep. they're not feeling like they can make changes or, you know, do other things. So I, I would be really interested in how uh, Lencioni approaches, you know, that, like if your gift is in this and yet you're stuck behind a computer all day, you know, right. cranking out numbers, mm -hmm. how do you, mm -hmm. how do you work that? 
Well, and what I appreciate the very first component to that and why we again say this is such a this is a team assessment. Um, we really encourage you taking it as a team is because the very first point of, of discussion there is the vocabulary, like being able to actually as a team have the vocabulary to say, hey, you know, I've recognized now that my genius is in wonder and and I'm yet here's what I'm doing and I can see how it's not aligned. Like, how do we approach that? And so, yes, we will get to, to that, too, certainly. But I think that. The, the vocabulary, just having a common vocabulary that we can all nice. be working off of is yeah. important. So let's talk about that vocabulary yes, a little bit. Yes, let's do that. <laughs> so you mentioned there's six working geniuses. There are six. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Title of the book, right? <laughs> yeah. um, so tell me about the six. Yes. So um, we're going to kind of go, we kind of consider in order. Now, one of the things I want you to visualize as you're listening to this is um, like cogs in a, in a, a wheel, right? Mm -hmm. So every genius is kind of this cog in in this this whole wheel and and it's all moving together. Okay. So you think about it, one kind of rolls down into the next one, one rolls down into the next one, rolls down into the next one. If I'm thinking about this correctly and correct me if I'm wrong, it is kind of about that, that it's about the process of yes, work, right? It so is. when you talk about the cogs in the wheel, you know, and you think about your own work, you start a process, right? It has Correct. a beginning, it has other steps in the middle, and then it has an end, yes. right? Um, and so when you think about those cogs, yes. that's what I would encourage people to kind of keep in mind. Absolutely. And so when we talk about it from the team point of view, recognize that we're really trying to amplify any process of work here. So mm -hmm. what a great point, Dewey, because it's, it's really thinking through any task, any change process, anything that you are doing together as individuals, it goes through a work process. And so um, there are three big stages of work. And each of these six geniuses fit into those stages of work. Um, the very first stage of work, they call this the ideation stage. So it's the stage of work where you're really trying to create the concepts, invent new ideas. Uh, beyond the ideation stage, you've got to be able, and this is a stage people often forget about, it's called the activation stage. You've got to be able to get people rallied around new ideas. You've got to be able to identify who's doing what in the process. And so activation often forgot because we'll go from ideation to the third stage, which is implementation. And so that's the stage where we're just starting to move the project forward, move the process forward. And it's that kind of boots on the ground, you know, um, execution of things. And so the geniuses, there are two geniuses for each stage of work. This is this common vocabulary we're talking about. The very first genius uh, that we're going to talk about is the genius of wonder. And the genius of wonder is really um, the people who love to speculate and question things. So they're constantly asking questions like, why are things the way they are? And <laughs> is there a better way to do this? And um, what, what other potential could we do to you know, achieve this? And so it's just- And these, how could this be the best problem we've ever had? Yes, right? <laughs> yes. You might be able, as you're listening here, and if you've listened to other episodes, start gauging some ideas on who has what genius on our <laughs> yeah. team. Yeah. And so this this person that has this gift, the people who have the gift of wonder truly are, are operating at a, at a very high level thinking, big picture, mm -hmm. right? So you've got to have the person who says, like, starts that whole work process on why do we do things the way we've been doing them? Mm -hmm. The second person that comes into this is going to be the second genius we talk about, and that's going to be the genius of invention. Because you got to have somebody who takes that big question and now says, oh, you're right. Here's some ideas. And so people with the genius of invention, they're coming up with those new ideas. They're the ones that are truly getting joy from innovating things from scratch. They love kind of the blank uh, whiteboard for them, or maybe in one of our colleagues' uh, cases, all the chart paper. Right? Uh, and <laughs> all that brainstorming. Yes. Yeah. Being able to create these ideas. And so th those two geniuses, wonder and invention, make up the stage of work called ideation, right? That's the first process in work. Then you're going to move into that next process of work. That's going to be the uh, activation stage. Mm -hmm. Okay. We cannot forget the activation stage. So the third genius that we're going to talk about, and for our listeners, we're going to break all these out in the following episodes too. Um, so come back. All right. Because we're going to talk more in depth about each of these geniuses. But the third genius is called the genius of discernment. It is the first part of the activation stage of work. And so people with the genius of discernment, they take all those ideas that the inventors just came up with and they evaluate it. Now, the people that have the genius of discernment, um, it 
there is a lot of of intuition that just kind of goes into this. It's not something that sometimes has much logical sense to it even. They just have this natural gift to be able to say, let me look at this. Let me help you make this idea better. Um, They're going to merit the workability of something and say, okay, I think this might be the best path moving forward, given all the information I currently yeah, have. So they might take a look at what might be risky, what's not yes. so risky. Um, you know, Is this really going to get us the results that we're looking yes. for? So they're asking themselves, and I bet a lot of other people, questions, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Evaluating the scope mm-hmm. of all of the ideas we just got invented. Okay. And that's that's an important piece, right? Because you can create all these things. And if you skip this, this important piece and the next one we'll talk about that are part of activation, then you go straight from all of these ideas to then trying to implement them. And you might not be implementing the right thing. Mm-hmm. And so it's important. The stage of work is very important. The fourth stage of work. So after our discerners get done with all their magic and discerning the ideas, then we've got to say, all right, this is the path we've decided to move forward on. And then we've got to have people who take up that case, who take up that next step and say, all right, team, let's go. Right. Let's go. And so that this is the genius of galvanizing. You've got to be able to get people enthusiastic, excited, um, really worked up about that idea or solution you just diluted it down to and and get them able to want to move forward on it i'm just thinking here as you as you're talking of course (laughs) (laughs) all right all right just seeing it in Um, as you were talking about that brianna what really popped in my head is galvanizing sounds to me a lot like you know coming up with a plan how to implement something right an action plan perhaps you know getting the people rallied around this idea and then how are we going to implement it? A little bit. Yeah. So you're going to you're talking the crossover a little bit between uh-huh. that activation stage and the implementation stage because mm-hmm. your galvanizers um, and I, I don't I, I always err on the side of caution when I use this language. But for all all intents and purposes, our, our galvanizers are kind of the cheerleaders on the generating the excitement mm-hmm. and the enthusiasm around the okay. idea. Um, then the point comes where it's like, let's start divvying out tasks. And that gets us to our fifth working genius. And the fifth working genius is the genius of enablement. This is the first genius in that final uh, work process implementation. So the people with the genius of enablement, they're responding uh, to the rallying cries of the galvanizer. They're the ones that are saying, okay, I can do this. Oh, you know, Sally, I know you're good at this. And so would you be willing to take this on? They're providing, anticipating, helping move the idea forward because they know how to get people into the right places to start the execution components. And so that's really what you were saying there, Dewey. That's, that is a great Mm-hmm. Um, picture of how our galvanizers and our enablers really work together okay. to start that process of execution. Then the final working genius uh, is the genius of tenacity. And this one is often forgotten about because it's like you think about work processes and they can be long and draining and daunting. And, and so you got it, you got to this point, right? And people are doing the work. And then we have a new process come in or something else is changing or and so maybe we let that kind of, um, you know, dribble off a little bit and we don't actually complete the work process. Mm -hmm. Our folks with the genius of tenacity are the ones pushing it across the finish line. Mm -hmm. They are going to be the ones that get joy and energy from finishing things. They're checking the box. Right. We have completed. Checking it off the to do list. Off the to do list. Right. Yeah. And they're ensuring that those ideas or those solutions that we've completed that work cycle. We need all six of these. That's the thing. And and so I often tell people when I'm doing trainings on this, like recognize that there's none, none are better than others. There's no genius bashing here, right? We need all of these as we kind of just outlined in every process of work to really complete the cycle and to ensure that we don't miss crucial steps along the way. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> i love just relearning and and like dusting this off again and it gets me excited about mm-hmm. yeah. talking about it so tell me um we're gonna go over our profiles here uh with the last few minutes that we have and then as i mentioned listeners we're gonna move into next week really um speaking specifically to each genius but you all said earlier you weren't you mentioned it kind of validated what you already yeah. kind of knew about yourself so first impressions of your profile after you took the assessment um yeah i was excited i mean i 
I was galvanizer, can I say? Like, yeah, like okay, right. so galvanizing was definitely in one of my geniuses. Who would have thought, right? I know, right? Yeah. This <laughs> idea Since activation of, is your number one Clifton strength. You know? I know, you yeah. know, and and woo. I mean, all of those things to me like fit very nicely into that idea of mobilizing people and getting them excited about something. Yeah. Um, you know, and and coming with invention from, you know, earlier, right? The the kind of the idea creation and then the the mobilization and then I fall apart. <laughs> mm, right? And that's when I'm like, okay, you guys take it from here, you know? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Well, and it was so true. I I called yours before you got your report, like before the assessment was even done. Wow. I was I was like that is that's Ray in a nutshell. Yeah. Uh, do we? How about you? What was your first impressions? Uh, it was just on target, you know, with all the other assessments that I mentioned before, you know. So, uh, my working genius is going to be um, discernment and wonder, mm. and so that doesn't surprise me with my strategic brain yes. that I'm constantly looking at big picture kinds of things and looking at new at asking those questions you know yeah. to try to figure out what we what we should be doing so um so those are my working geniuses the the idea of discernment and wonder competencies though is enablement and the idea of invention because I I do like to kind of brainstorm and come up with new things. Uh, but my frustrations were right on target as well. So this whole idea of galvanizing, it's not really me. <laughs> I leave that up to Ray. Um, and tenacity, which is not is yeah. is my last one. And yeah, that's why I con that's why I got, I really rely on you, Brianna. Uh -huh. because, <laughs> because that's your strength, right? And that's that's where your genius is. Yeah, it's, it's one of my competencies. Oh, and is so, it? I thought it yeah, was one of your so, geniuses. Yeah. I'm sorry. So a great example right there, right? Mm -hmm. Because people will be able to represent things. Their, their competencies may show up like geniuses for them. Mm -hmm. And so just recognizing, you know, how how is that impacting work? Is it, you know? Because I enjoy drawing things across the finish line, too. Yeah. But Ray, what were your competencies and your frustrations? Oh, gosh. Let's see. My uh, competencies were uh, discernment. Mm-hmm. Um, I love to make decisions um, and enablement, which mm -hmm. I think when I think about galvanizing, you know, getting people ready and making sure they have the skills and the motivation and and feel feel like they're able to do it. So that that made sense um, in the competencies and my frustration, tenacity mm -hmm. mm. and wonder. Mm. Um, I so that that doesn't surprise me. It kind of, you know, uh I to wish some degree it, it does. Yeah. It surprises me. Oh. Um, but and, and I would probably say the tenacity part, because I think you're very, you know, you stick with things and get things done, you know? Do you know how like draining that is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and and again, I think it's when I think about these competencies and down into the frustrations, a lot of it is because it has to get done. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. but man, if I could just come up with it and like get excited about it and then go Pfft, Hand it yeah. off. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. But you know, life has said, you know, complete or a previous job. It's kind of uh, been a learned behavior. I yep. guess I'm going to ask about that. You know, is that more of a learned thing? Mm -hmm. um, like you can do it and you can probably do it really well. Absolutely. But, um, you know, it might actually drain your resources. Absolutely. And that's where we talk about those competencies. And so, yes. I, and I want to make that that distinction too, because sometimes people think like, oh, you know, because it's not a genius, then I might be able to just kind of um, elude in or, or not remove myself from from any part of that particular work process. And the reality is we still need to have all of these skills as individuals. Mm -hmm. And so recognize that that just because it may be a frustration or or a competency, even like it's not a it's not a cop out for saying I'm I don't have to be a part of that process of the work. Right. We have to have these skills. And to your point, Ray, it is absolutely we learn more about each of these areas and these skills. That doesn't mean that it's ever going to actually bring us that joy and fulfillment. But work demands require, you know, or experiences require us to be skilled in all of these areas. We're adults. We have to do a lot of things we don't really like <laughs> That's all the time, right? right? That's Isn't right. that what we talk about professionalism? Exactly. Yes. Right. yes. Uh, and so my working genius is on here on our team um, to round things out there is I yeah. have the, the genius of discernment and of enablement. Mm. So we do have people on our team. We represent every single bucket 
except tenacity. <laughs> so, but that's why we just keep creating new things. We do. We do. We can't ever stop. Uh-uh. We can't ever stop. But what is interesting to me, and we'll take the last couple of minutes or so, we'll probably run over just a little bit on here, but um, you know, you brought up something earlier, Ray, and and for me, actually, one of my frustrations, so my my geniuses, discernment and enablement, uh, my competencies, I, I can invent and I can also be tenacious. So mm-hmm. that's probably where you were thinking the tenacity <laughs> earlier, Dewey. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then my frustrations are actually uh, wonder and galvanizing. <laughs> and I mm. thought that was so interesting to me. But let's talk about that wonder component, because that means that both Ray and I have a working frustration of wonder. And Dewey, you have a working genius of wonder. Well, what does I've that known feel that like? for years. No. Yeah. <laughs> What is that like in our conver- our team meetings and those? I mean, before we were able to ever put vocabulary to it, can you think back to some of those experiences? Um, yeah, I mean, in my role, I'm often having to kind of uh, be in the middle between upper leadership mm. here at MU Extension and, um, you know, and then us. Us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I try to be that buffer for them. So I'm often wondering, you know, how can we how can we get more value? How can we prove more value? Yeah. Um, how do we improve our results? Because uh, I want I want extension leadership to see all that. Um, so it, it's really all to me. It's just I sit around oftentimes just taking information in um, and thinking to myself, OK, how do we do this or what if this? I do a lot of what ifing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that kind of thing. But I will say this, you know, because I know that um, you've got you've got invention, right? Mm-hmm. And you've got invention um, as a competency. As a competency. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think it shows up invention and that wonder to me really kind of go hand in hand. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think all three of us can really tap into that because you've got that as either as a competency or as a working genius. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And if that makes sense. It does. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to tap into Ray on the galvanizing because I'm looking at our, we, we have team a team profile here. Yeah. Up. So if you see me keep looking at my computer, if you're watching on YouTube, that's where I'm at. But Ray, you're our only galvanizer. And actually it's a working frustration for Dewey and I. So have you seen how that's shown up in some of our, our team Oh, meetings? don't say it. Don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, here here's the thing about galvanizers. Like, they get excited just to get excited. Like, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. so even though, yes, I want everybody on on the bus, I'm just like, the bus is going anyway. <laughs> you know, like, it's just going to be great no matter what. So, you know, I yes, I get that. Like, I am the only, and thank goodness. I mean, that's just a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. Um, and so the balance that is provided. Now, I call it balance. It's now called frustration, but... Um, there, there is that balance. Mm-hmm. But I look at my woo. Oh, absolutely. You know, I look at my activator. Oh, my goodness. I mean, those are in my top. Those are my top two, right? And I'll, and I'll say this about, about your galvanizing is it's, it's uh, infectious, right? Yes. You know? So when you start to get excited about things, it does help me get a little bit more excited. Energy yeah. attracts it, like mm-hmm. energy. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, I was just here thinking like, so that, that example you just gave, like, I just get excited to get excited. I can remember when I interviewed for this job. And I thought oh, you dear. were the most pleasant and friendliest, like upbeat person I'd ever met on the phone for an over the phone interview. <laughs> like you were so excited to interview me. And I'm like, who's excited to interview somebody? <laughs> like just, Ray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ray was. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And that's honestly, that was a very intentional decision. Mm-hmm. You know, we talked about that. And first of all, I, I love that. Yeah. And we're trying to attract that, yeah. you know. And so, yeah, that was a very intentional I love that you're using that word because that is exactly uh, what we are trying to create with this understanding of the six types of working genius. How can we intentionally place people in positions and in spaces, whether it's leading team meetings or different projects or different scopes of the project or uh, whatever it might be in a process of work, how do we place them appropriately in a way that will honor and respect their geniuses, let them allow allow them to tap into it, right? Because it's a natural gift. And then truly bring that sense because if everyone's doing that on a team, then the whole team is winning with a sense of energy, fulfillment, and joy. And so allow- And there is sometimes a sense of relief that you don't have to do it all, yes. right? That yes. really rely on, the, on those strengths and those geniuses of other yeah. people. And I see this so much with leaders that I've worked with on this. Um, and actually part of this whole assessment, typically I, I talk with the leaders first because like there's a lot of pressure 
as a leader, I think, to just feel like you have to be able to do it all. Mm -hmm. And that's the coolest part. That goes back into that guilt and judgment conversation we were saying earlier. But like this says like, no, you don't. Mm -hmm. That's why we have the other people on the team and they love it. So why not give it to them? Right, right. So, yes. So there's there's so much more to this assessment. So with that in mind, uh, what's the next session uh, yes. on this? What's the next episode? What are we going to talk about there with this? Because I'm yes. excited about this whole model. I know. Me too. And we could spend, well, whole training sessions on this, right? <laughs> uh, and so let me just say that to our listeners first. So if this has gotten you excited, if, if uh, we've galvanized you, right, and you're interested in taking this assessment, shoot us an email, all right? This is something that we can offer as an individual package. I'd be honored to, or if it's something you want to bring in with your team, and try. Let's talk about that. MTI at Missouri.edu. The next steps and what we're, you're going to hear about throughout this series, we are going to break down every genius over the course of the next six weeks. Oh, great. Yes. And so as you heard on our team just now, we have a good representation. We're going to be talking and speaking into some of those personal experiences uh, as we talk more about the specifics of each genius. So I encourage you, come back, get excited. And if you're not, we're going to send Ray your direction. Okay. So... <laughs> <laughs> And stay tuned. <laughs> yes, yeah. Any final thoughts or comments before we close out? No, I, I, I guess I'm just excited to talk about it and learn a lot more about this from you. Yeah. Awesome. Sounds good. Well, I'm still going to send it to our galvanizer uh, before we sign off today. So until next time, go be great. And that's a wrap, folks. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Weekly Workplace. We hope you've been inspired, equipped, and ready to tackle whatever challenges come your way. But before you go, remember, the journey to success never stops. Keep grinding, keep growing, and keep striving for greatness. And hey, if you want to stay ahead of the game and never miss an episode, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. Don't forget to leave a comment and let us know what you thought of today's show. Your feedback fuels our fire. Also, show us some love by liking and sharing this podcast with your friends, colleagues, and fellow go-getters. Together, let's spread the knowledge and empower more professionals to reach their full potential. For even more tools and resources to elevate your career, check out the Missouri Training Institute. So until next time, keep hustling, keep learning, and keep dominating the workplace.